OK, Brad, so let's try and think through how you might look at the business model for a commercial satellite. And there's a lot of them. Yes, most of them, in fact, nowadays. <laughs> and this is the sort of thing that I think that we're so stuck in the idea that it's all research satellites. In fact, all of the stuff that we use, for the most part, practically, is a commercial business. And a lot of this, a good category is Earth observations. And we'll talk a lot about observing from space later in this course. But let's say you build an Earth observation satellite that's going to look on the ground. Now, you can trade how much area you're going to look at. You can look at how often we're going to look at. But really, then you need to dictate how much am I going to charge. So not only do I cover all of those costs I just have to pay for, but actually have enough money to make a business, because otherwise I'm going to go out of business. And here's a good example. These are different types of Earth observation satellites. And they actually have a different way of calculating it. So they have a different minimum order area. So what does order area mean? So essentially saying, you may say, hey, I would really love to use this satellite to go take an image of the tree in my yard. Okay. Now, you may say, that's a great idea. But they may say, well, if I go spend time imaging 10 meters over there, I'm not spending time imaging 100 kilometers over there. So you have to pay the same price that they do. OK. It's essentially, it's kind of the bare minimum use. It's kind of the, the minimum plan you can get. So you may say, I only want to look at one, one hectare, hectare, but they're going to charge you for 10,000 hectares. Because otherwise, it's not practical for them because they're not getting enough use out of it. Yeah, I mean, you have to bear in mind that they have to make money. Yeah. A lot of the early Earth observation satellites were government-funded ones. Yeah. And they now publish, um, here's a picture of current war going on here yeah, or the yeah. volcano over there as PR, but most of the time they're selling money to some contractor. That contractor might be a, a government agriculture department wanting to find out how the crops are going. It might be... It could um, be an individual if they really want. It could be a business. It could be anyone. That's right. I mean, the benefit of doing it from space is that you can observe anywhere on the Earth with a consistent pattern rather quickly, yep. uh, but you're always competing against, what well, I just fly a plane over and take a photo out the window. Exactly. And so it's always a trade-off. And so generally speaking, if you wanted to photograph just a tree in your backyard, you're probably cheaper off sending a plane over it or hiring a helicopter for a, a bit. Exactly. If you want to map the uh, amount of deforestation in the Amazon, it's going to be a lot of planes, a lot of hours. You're better off doing it with a satellite. Exactly. So, so that has to factor into their business model of, where their customer is going to want it and how it makes it cost effective for them. Because ultimately what they're saying is, all right, it's actually going to be relatively cheap. It's only going to be a six cents per hectare. You know, generally speaking, you're kind of looking at uh, $1,000 per 100 square kilometer nowadays, right? So to image 100 square kilometers, so 10 by 10 kilometers, you can spend about $1,000. Now to a consumer, that actually could be quite cheap. If you're a business and I want to image my large farm or station because I need to do some building, well, for $1,000, instead of hiring a helicopter, which is going to probably be more if you have to pay for the helicopter and the fuel and the pilot and insurance, just pay $1,000 to the satellite company. So what they say is, all right, let, let's maximize the cost effectiveness, but also so that we actually get enough customers that use it, because we could charge a lot, but if no one's going to pay for it, no one's going to pay for it. So there's a lot of economists talk, there'd be supply and demand curves, and if you want to charge as much as you can get away with, so the two cross. Exactly. And in fact, if you kind of look at it, this is the uh, minimum price of a satellite versus the resolution. So the resolution being, we can see a lot more over here. A lot more detail. Versus less detail. And you notice it's kind of inverse, right? Yep. There's going to be um, some dramatic changes in how what your costs are relative to what you can see. Yes, so again, you've got a trade-off. I mean, if you want a really close view to read the newspaper over someone's shoulder, which, um, it's going to be only going to be looking at a small area. It's not going to be very useful if you wanted to map the new suburbs of a city to work out where you're going to put your new fast food restaurant. Exactly. So all of these things are these different economies that you have to do. And a great example of this is satellite internet. Now, this is something becoming more and more popular. And so we build a satellite, and there's a certain cost to it. And we're also going to build a certain amount on this network to do it. Now, we can see here are some different costs of how it may be. And again, this is uh, we've built all of those things we talked about from design, paying for the people, the launch. And let's look at our budgets here. So if we really want to get a 30 gigabyte per second satellite, so we got some fast internet. If we are spending $105 million on it, we're going to have to charge $15 more for when we spend $40 million less. Yes. Now, that's practical, right? You have to recoup this money at some point. Yeah. Not surprising. Yeah, decide you. Um, do we have 
faster data rates and cost more, but was anyone going to afford that? What does the audience, what do the consumers actually want in the situation? Exactly, because if you're saying, hey, we're only going to give you 10 gigabytes per second, and now all of a sudden it's $120 was $40, maybe you're not. But it's, that's not the only factor. This is assuming a certain lifetime. If you're only going to be up there for five years, well, you have to get that money back faster than if you were to be there in nine years. And so some of these things at lifetime, it's not just affecting what the science you're gonna do as we were talking about earlier, but if you need to make money on it, if you're shortening it by four years, well, you need to obviously charge more, So, but you don't wanna to charge too much so that no one pays for it. And presumably a spacecraft that's gonna last 10 years is gonna be more expensive than a spacecraft that only lasts five years. It'd have to be in a higher orbit. It'd have to have more resources of fuel. It's gonna be heavier, so it's gonna cost more. That's right. And so you've got a trade off there about does the extra cost pay itself back? Exactly. Or is it all going to be obsolete in five years? Will someone have come along with a different rival thing that's more efficient technology? And, and this is the sort of thing that we talk about all of these trade-offs and kind of, you know, designing and then saying, let's try and tweak this. There isn't one solution, and, the, and especially in these business worlds that uh, a lot of our satellites that we use on have to factor into it. And then it's even, well, how many people can we support? Right, so if we say we have 50% usage, 60% or 70%, well- That's the fraction of people living in the area covered by the satellite craft to actually sign up for it, isn't Exactly, it? that's right. So, you know, we're saying, all right, well, how many are we gonna get for a plan? How many are actually gonna buy that plan and how much are we gonna coop that money? Because 100% of people aren't gonna be using these satellites. 100% of people aren't gonna be booking your Earth observation satellites. And again, there's a trade-off in terms of cost. I mean, every extra person who's trying to use their internet through satellites is going to mean you need to have bigger antennae and more yep. electronics and larger download stations and so on, which are gonna cost more, which is fine as long as those people will pay more. Um, but if you've run out of people who are prepared to pay enough, it's not going to work. Exactly. And this is kind of this hidden idea of space that we often forget of. Space is a business. And so in a lot of these areas, there are economists as business people. You know, we often view space as people like me or people that build rockets. But there's a whole bunch of other areas that have to go into this to make it profitable. Because if they're not going to be profitable, they're not going to build it. If they're not going to build it, there's not going to be research to develop it then there's gonna be no consumers that get their faster internet and so on and so on and so on.